وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to the program Muslims in America the religion of Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world and the majority of that growth is taking place right here in the United States of America According to most reliable estimates, there are more than 7 million Muslims living in the United States of America. Muslims have become vital and valuable assets to the American society. So please join me as I travel around the USA and introduce you, my viewers, to a few of the many Muslims in America. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the program Muslims in America. Our travels today have brought us to the nation's capital, which is Washington, D.C. And we're outside in Virginia, in one of the suburbs, and we're here with Imam Johari Abdul Malik, who's the director of outreach for the Dal Hidra Islamic Center. Salaamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa And welcome to the program, and thanks for inviting us and spending a few minutes to talk with us about Muslims in America. Alhamdulillah. Imam Johari, uh, before we begin, just tell us a bit about yourself and your background and how you became Muslim. Well, subhanallah, wa bihamdik wa shadu la ilaha anta sakfullah wa tubu ilayhi. I accepted uh, Islam uh, as a college student. I mm -hmm. grew up in Brooklyn, New York, mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, sub-cities of New York City. Mm -hmm. I grew up uh, Christian, mm -hmm. um, raised uh, by my mother and active in the Episcopal Church, which is the Anglican Church, the Church of England mm -hmm. in America. Right. Uh, something. But it was was that different in your uh, neighborhood to be uh, a part of the Episcopal Church and be an well, Afro-American? Well, I, I think that you know you you raise the the question and and you're in trouble because you ask this question. Mm -hmm. The real issue is that the immigrants who came from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. who came from colonies of the British Empire, mm -hmm. were overwhelmingly from the Church of England. Mm -hmm. Well, in the United States, during the War of Independence, the Church of England had to decide whether it would keep its allegiance to the crown or whether it would create a new church. Mm -hmm. And so it created the Episcopal Church in America, mm -hmm. no longer being connected with the Church of England. But my father is from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so our people, those West Indians who lived in that neighborhood, went to the Episcopal Church. Mm -hmm. If you were an African American from the South, like my mother, mm -hmm. you might be a Baptist or something like that. But because my father's side of the family mm -hmm. was from the Caribbean, we wound up being in the Episcopal mm -hmm. Church. Mm -hmm. uh, in that community, I mean, I was regular in church. I sang in the choir. Mm -hmm. um, I took my religious studies seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even at some point, you know, thought about, you know, I would, I'd like to go up to the next level, maybe you know, uh, assist the priest or maybe even become a priest. Mm -hmm. So from quite a young age, you felt fairly religious. Yeah, oh, always. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the summers, I would visit uh, my mother's side of the family that were part of the Pentecostal church. Mm -hmm. And their religious experience is radically different mm -hmm. than the quiet uh, and very controlled Episcopal uh, worship experience. Mm -hmm. They had tambourines and drums and singing but they had a very organic religious experience. Mm -hmm. God was in everything. Mm -hmm. um, no television, mm -hmm. because they said Satan is in the television. Mm -hmm. No movies. When I was little and I visited them, uh, you couldn't go to the movies. You couldn't go to the baseball game, because mm -hmm. they said in the baseball game, the boys and girls are like this, and mm -hmm. people are not watching. They're drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I, I had that experience also. Mm -hmm. 
So I saw people who had a real um, commitment to religious life, not just on Sunday, like in my church, mm -hmm. but a daily commitment, nightly uh, worship services and so on. And I was really uh, taken by their practice. Mm -hmm. Then coming back to New York, uh, back to a more liberal uh, religious environment, I continued to be serious about listening to the service, listening to the sermon, uh, taking my confirmation. And it's at 12 or 13 where you have to go through a class mm -hmm. to learn about the faith. Mm -hmm. It's in that class that I think I had my first realization looking back that I would become Muslim because... But let me ask you, ma'am, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you just to, to be clear. Sure. Because I interviewed many people who were who considered themselves to be religious Christians mm -hmm. and they tried their best mm -hmm. to study their religion <clears throat> but after a while they they comment that they find themselves really just parroting what was being said mm -hmm. but not really understanding it fully and mm -hmm. it wasn't able to take a root in their heart did you have any experience similar to that well in confirmation class I had this experience mm -hmm. which is they asked us to say the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. from the Bible. This is, these, these are uh, written in Exodus as one example. And it says the first commandment, we were asked to say it and then talk about its meaning. Mm -hmm. So I volunteered right away. Mm -hmm. First commandment, uh, know, children of Israel, that your God is one God and refuses to have anyone worship besides him. Mm -hmm. So the priest asked, what do you have to say? I said, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we have three gods in our church mm -hmm. and the commandment says that there's only one God? He said, we have only one God. It's three in one. I said, I don't understand. He said, it's, it's a mystery of the faith you have to accept it. So... That's what you're saying. Yes. So I was like, okay, second commandment. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image of the likeness of anything that is in the earth or on the earth or in the water or on the earth. And it gives some descriptions. And then it says, thou shalt not bow down to them nor worship them. Mm -hmm. You know, here I, here I am in a class of teen, little teenagers mm -hmm. who the last thing they want to do is have a deep theological discussion after school. Mm -hmm. They want to go, we want to go out and play. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking follow-up question. I said, Father, when I come through the church, there are all of these um, altars, and there is the, the three, uh, and there's a cross, and it says we shouldn't worship these things, but every altar... I pass by about three of them to get to this class. Mm -hmm. Every altar I have to, to stop and have my reverence to the statues. Mm -hmm. He said, oh no, we're not worshipping the statue. We're worshipping what the statue represents. Mm -hmm. I said, <laughs> one more question. Right. And, and, you know, with a kind of disgust, you know, I said, you know, what else? I said, well, it says, thou shalt not bow down nor worship. Mm -hmm. Now, you're saying that I'm not worshiping, but I know I am bowing down. Mm -hmm. Oh, he turned red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how old are you at this time? I'm like 12, 13. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, when you're a kid and you see and you make the priest turn red, mm -hmm. do you a little bit of knowledge what you have and his knowledge of from seminary mm -hmm. you know you have that kind of feeling like hmm I'm mm -hmm. on to something mm -hmm. from there I was confirmed not that what the priest was explaining away was the truth mm -hmm. but that what I read I felt in my heart that was true mm -hmm. that there's only one God we shouldn't bow down and worship anything except God I began listening to the sermon and the reading from the scriptures with a different ear, Allahu Alam, where it came from. Mm -hmm. The reading of the sermon where uh, at Easter and when you're taping uh, and talking about Easter, you do a program on Easter, know that when they talk about Easter, Jesus is reported to have said in the Bible, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. I was regular in church, and every Easter we went through the same uh, rituals and the same reading and the same sermon. And so after a number of years, I began to say, you know what? I think that I'm on to something. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying, I am not God. Mm -hmm. That I'm asking God not to forsake me. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. Mm -hmm. That goes with that Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. That there's only one God. Jesus, I listen in church attentively. And the priest says that Jesus said, I cannot do anything without the Father mm -hmm. who sent me. That's man, that's I began feeling, you know what? I as a human being, I am like Isa alayhi salam. I'm like yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing this message and my power comes from the one who sent him. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about Islam. Mm -hmm. But the fitra, something told me those words are the truth and the interpretation of them is lacking. Mm -hmm. Continuing to grow as a high school student I began reading and studying about... Now, at this time, did your parents now. notice this change taking place in your beliefs? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, they just see you as, you know, you're growing up and, you know, reading this and that and going here and there. And mm -hmm. It's international, it's eclectic, mm -hmm. you know, so didn't have... In fact, my mother uh, used to rent uh, in our house in Brooklyn, they have a kind of housing they call brownstones mm -hmm. where um, in the old days maybe one family would live in the whole building mm -hmm. but as uh, patterns change and families were smaller our people would live in one part and they would rent the other part out mm -hmm. and so we had many international students who would come and rent uh, in the house above us mm -hmm. rooms and some of those men became my babysitters mm -hmm. My first babysitter, my mother trusted this man, said he's a good young man. Mm -hmm. His name was Sammy Abdul Wahab. <laughs> <laughs> so my first experience as a young man, and remember I'm going through, th this is going on during the, the uh, conversion uh, discussions and confirmation and the uh, Pentecostal experience in the summer, but I also get Sammy Abdul Wahab mm -hmm. to be my babysitter. Mm -hmm. And so I sit and go in his room when you know my mother has something to do, and I go in his room and we eat, and he's sitting on the floor, mm -hmm. and he has a big bowl like that, mm -hmm. and he says, "Come to eat with but, me." But I mean, it just says something about uh, <laughs> his character so how, that your mother would feel comfortable to leave to you. She trusted him. Yeah, yeah. Where there were men who live in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. she would never leave them, leave me with them. Mm -hmm. But this young man, Sammy Abdul Wahab, he was from Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. She trusted him. Another young man later on would become uh, the person, you know the tradition in America, if the first house that you come and stay in, mm -hmm. uh, you take them as your adopted family. Mm -hmm. And so Sammy Abdul Wahab, he became like my older brother. Mm -hmm. There was another man, he came from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is, the, the country has the largest Muslim population in Africa. Mm -hmm. This man, name is Bunji. Mm -hmm. Well, as I begin growing and studying about Islam, my mother starts becoming concerned. And she talks to now my like older brother who was babysitter and so on for me. Now, why does she become concerned? Does she see some change in the way oh, you speak? Of course. Speak? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, <coughs> she knows I'm becoming interested in Islam. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm becoming uh, politically critical of the society, which is... Oh, wh you know, what are some of the things you would say to your mother to oh, make well, her realize... Well, I, I, pork, I'm not eating that. So you told your mother you were not going to eat pork oh, anymore. Oh, that's, that's a major... That's a very serious. Yeah, you can't eat your mother's food. Mm -hmm. but, bef but before I did that, I became vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as a vegetarian, I'd already laid down the law mm -hmm. of not eating any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But then, as I came closer to Islam, mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm... I'm I'm going to eat some meat, but not all meat. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's that? Okay, and I'm not going to church. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, right? I said, I'm not going to church the, the, because of the contradictions that I observed. Mm -hmm. My mother talked to Bungie, mm -hmm. 
whose real name is Mobalaji. Mm -hmm. And in his language, Mobalaji is an Africanized version of the word Muhammad. <laughs> so she says to him, Mobalaji, my son, what's he doing? He said, well, I grew up a Muslim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went to Islamic school in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But myself, I don't really practice Islam. But I think that what he's doing is right on the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so you see a, a convergence of influences mm -hmm. from the black church experience, mm -hmm. the presence of the, the doctrine that came from the Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. The social impact from uh, students who were coming to America, and they weren't talking to me about Islam, mm -hmm. but from their akhlaq, from mm -hmm. their character mm -hmm. and their behavior, my mother found them suitable men to be role models. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't think either one of them really practice Islam today, mm -hmm. but from their example, when I ate with Sami Abdul Wahab, mm -hmm. he told me, "Eat with your right hand." Mm -hmm. And I said, what kind of meat is this? Mm -hmm. Pork? He said, no way. Mm -hmm. Pork, uh, we don't need that. Mm -hmm. huh? Probably what he was eating was from the halal store. Mm -hmm. But he never shared that with me. Mm -hmm. Just I ate the way he ate. Mm -hmm. And I did the things which he did. No alcohol, none of those things. Uh, which probably as a college student, mm -hmm. from I would find you know beer, cigarettes, etc. Mm -hmm. in his room. This man had a different... Uh, way of life mm -hmm. and I think those people had the other sort of uh, just a very subtle dawah mm -hmm. they were making from their character and when they saw me moving toward Islam they encouraged my mother not to be afraid that it's not a bad thing and so on even though they never talked to me directly about La ilaha illallah I'm sorry mm -hmm. uh, this is a common not. thread we have a common thread among yes, among people who come to Islam, especially from the Afro-American community, mm -hmm. that the autobiography of Malcolm X <coughs> was something which really set them on the oh. road to Islam. Oh. Just give me a bit about you, how the book affected you in a way to make you want to pursue the study of uh, Islam, to really know it for your own self. Well, you know, <coughs> with regard to this, the phenomenon of the autobiography of Malcolm X, it laid out for me a, a love and a fascination for Malcolm, what he was saying, what, what he was doing at that time. Assassinated uh, February 21st, 1965. Uh, I was uh, very young then. I born in 1956. I was about nine years old when he was assassinated. But it re his assassination reverberated in the community. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be until maybe another ten years later that I would read the autobiography of Malcolm X for myself. Mm -hmm and become influenced by his iconic figure mm -hmm. that his political analysis was a driving uh, issue for me and his radical monotheism mm -hmm. and so for me those two things went together to be a radical monotheist mm -hmm. and to be critical of the issue of race and, and, and social struggle uh, was right up my alley mm -hmm. But it also provided for me an insight that said, you know what? Can't join a nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by them and I'm fascinated by the rhetoric of then Minister Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to join a nation of Islam. By the time I get to college, uh, 1974, uh, Farrakhan is the national spokesman for Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elijah Muhammad is soon going to pass away. Mm -hmm. So for me there was now this the rhetoric of Farrakhan mm -hmm. but the backdrop in my neighborhood that Farrakhan and the nation were implicated in the assassination of Malcolm X what I wound up doing is listening to Malcolm mm -hmm. speeches recordings on Sundays instead of when when other people were listening to the sermon from the church mm -hmm. uh, I would be playing uh, message to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be listening to Malcolm X speaks out. Mm -hmm. I would listen to the lecture of Malcolm X speaks to young people, mm -hmm. and and I uh, the ballot or the bullet, mm -hmm. and I memorized those speeches listening every Sunday uh, on my cassette recorder. They had uh, lectures in the university library, and I would get those tapes, and I would get the the the, the lectures, 
and I would listen to them religiously. Mm -hmm. And so maybe for me, Malcolm and his autobiography was an iconic shift for me. 1977, Alex Haley, the man who wrote the autobiography of Malcolm X, had his book Roots mm -hmm. broadcast in serial on television. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another major milestone to mm -hmm. see, oh, from my black nationalist agenda, mm -hmm. that the hero in the story mm -hmm. is Kunta Kinte, mm -hmm. who comes from the Gambia, who in the beginning of this, this serial, uh, uh, serialized broadcast mm -hmm. is a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. So now I have an affinity to Malcolm and I have this roots phenomenon that maybe I'm from those African Americans mm -hmm. who were brought from Africa, who were originally Muslim and we had our Islam taken from us. Mm -hmm. And so this deepened now. And so Alex Haley has two. Mm -hmm. Roots and the autobiography of Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. But I am continuing on a very personalized journey. I'm not involved in any Islamic groups or organizations, although I'm active in terms of the social projects that are going on. Mm -hmm. It isn't until much later that I actually realize that I've already become a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I've given up the things that are haram mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. I'm hanging around people who are Muslim. Mm -hmm. I'm even attending Jumwa. Mm -hmm. I'm fasting Ramadan. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I'm with them, I make salah. Mm -hmm. I've learned some surahs and uh, from the Quran, so I can pray on my own. Some brothers taught me how to make wudu. And this is all before you. And, I, the and finally, a man says to me, his name is Shamsuddin. Mm -hmm. He taught me Surah Al-Fatiha in a way so so excellent mm -hmm. that only once have I had someone correct my pronunciation mm -hmm. of Al-Fatiha. Sitting with him, he put his hand on my throat and I put my hand on his throat. Mm -hmm. And he said, say Ain. Mm -hmm. Ain. Ain. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Qaf. Mm -hmm. Qaf. I said, he said, look at my tongue. Mm -hmm. Many years later, he said to me, what? so when did you take Shahada? Mm -hmm. I said, take Shahada, what do you mean? He said, you know, you become Muslim. I said, you have to. So up to that point, you were just to. Muslim by nature. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Muslim by nature. <laughs> well, I, but it was informed. Mm -hmm. It was educated. Right. But the notion <laughs> of Shahada as an event in one's life, that the, a bright light hit you, mm -hmm. and today, and so finally one day I said, you know, Shamsuddin, maybe there's something to this, you know, mm -hmm. that you have to actually. I mean, I was, uh, you know, saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah before I pray all the time. Mm -hmm. He said, no, but you have to make the commitment before people that you are in fact accepting this not as something that you do personally, mm -hmm. but it's a social contract. Right. I said, okay. So I went to the Islamic Center of Washington on Massachusetts Avenue mm -hmm. one Friday after Jumwa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I sat with some people and they asked me a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And they put my name in the book. Mm -hmm. And they said, what do you want your name to be? Mm -hmm. And I said, Johari Abdul Malik. Mm -hmm. And how did, you, how did you select this name? Oh, subhanAllah. You know, it, there are so many uh, people who have stories and now I can tell you how people here come either they take a name which is similar to the name which they have so your name is david they mm -hmm. say oh dawood right the name is john oh yahya so you get the stamp whether you like <laughs> whether you like mm -hmm. dawood or yahya or not mm -hmm. they're going to tell you yahya that's your name brother mm -hmm. or some people will take a name which the initials are the same as the the first letter of the first and last name they will take a name so if his name was maurice Mm -hmm. They say, okay, we'll, we'll take something uh, uh, M mm -hmm. from Islam, Meme, and we'll give you a new name. So mm -hmm. Mahmoud, his name used to be Maurice, now he's Mahmoud. Mm -hmm. And his name used to be Smith, they say, okay, uh, take some name, Salahuddin. Mm -hmm. So he now accepts this name. Mm -hmm. Or a name which has a meaning, mm -hmm. which they like the sound of this name, and it has a meaning which, which as it relates to, to them 
or some figure from Islam that they want to take the attributes, characteristic of this person. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a mixture of these. Mm -hmm. um, always, <coughs> I was concerned about being real. Mm -hmm. About being real. About really representing something. Mm -hmm. And I came across this name from someone that I know. They said, this name, Jawhar. Jawhar, mm -hmm. a jewel, a gem, essence. Mm -hmm. the, the, to take coal mm -hmm. and to compress it into the gem. Jawhar, that's a good name mm -hmm. for you. But I met it through my uh, black American uh, cultural experience. The word Johari. Mm -hmm. Swahili Africanized version of the Arabic word Johar mm -hmm. Johari mm -hmm. so alhamdulillah they said Johari this is a good name for mm -hmm. you brother be real mm -hmm. and subhanallah when I left high school one of my friends said man when you go to college man be real man mm -hmm. and so subhanallah Johar I said okay I'm a, I, I like that but last name the family name in America mm -hmm. I had some groups of Muslims that were my friends. Mm -hmm. And one of them, his name was Hassan Abdul Malik. Mm -hmm. And Hassan was very close to me among the Muslims that I knew. And so I said, okay, I'm going to join Hassan's family. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be, and amazing, the number of Muslims, there's a man, Omar Abdul Malik, mm -hmm. who introduced me to the political life as a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what do you mean the political life as a Muslim? In other words, he was an active Muslim in politics in Washington. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and when there was uh, an event in the city and the mayor was going to meet with the religious leaders, mm -hmm. he said, since I do political work, I raise money, I organize in the campaign, you have your big pastor, I want my imam. Mm -hmm. Who? Johari Abdul Malik. Mm -hmm. I said, subhanAllah. He, they said, are you related to him? He said, no. But, and of course, Malik al Shabazz. Mm. So, Abdul Malik, because maybe if I was there with Malcolm, I would have said, don't take the name Malik Shabazz. Mm -hmm. Call yourself Abdul Malik mm -hmm. Shabazz. So, mashallah. I mean, you really so some Malcolm, thoughts. So, the Malcolm <laughs> piece. <laughs> right connected with this mm -hmm. to say I, if I could be in one family mm -hmm. inshallah I should be in Malcolm oh, oh mountains of Mecca bear witness that I to the oneness of Allah do I testify for all that he's given me how can I deny my purpose in life should be only to cry la ilaha illallah Muhammad There is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah There is no God but Allah Muhammad is his messenger Rasulullah, Allah, 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 Allah,